Okay, so I decided to do a part two to this video. Um, this is my last time doing this whole thing, so I'm going to just do two videos and be done. All right, so I want to discuss um the whole situation with um with how we as Black people are divided among ourselves. And what I mean is that, you know, among color lines, like, we, we have hue issues. If someone's light-skinned, then they have issues with somebody's dark skin and vice versa. Um, you know, a lot of people who are biracial feel rejected by black people. And some black people really kind of, kind of perpetuate that, you know, in some way. I think that we have to really get beyond that. If you are a black person and you identify in some way with the black race, you know, and you are one of us, you are one of us. And we as black people need to stop trying to divide each other and stop trying to categorize each other as something else. Respect that someone's different and understand their differences however they want to express their differences. But certainly we are a people. We still have things in common. We still have more in common than we have difference. We still have a common identity or descendant that went through X, Y, and Z, had in common, whatever it might be. You know what I'm saying? We are a people who have gone through a certain amount of things together. And we have that in common. And I think that is, we shouldn't allow ourselves to be divided among ourselves on petty things. Um, especially those of us who are biracial. Because I have cousins who are biracial. I would hate to see that a biracial person would feel like they are rejected. I know how it is in the black community. I mean, you get picked on for whatever you might have. An, an issue with that's how it is you pick on black kids they 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 learn how to fight early you know what i'm saying you, you better fight or you'll get your ass whooped and you'll be getting you know whatever you know what i'm saying but you better fight and survive or whatever so black kids learn how to fight learn how to argue you learn how to survive among each other and among anybody else so it's understandable that you would have you know issues like being, being called you know white boy or maybe being called you know whatever it might be you know that was derogatory or hurtful so I understand some, some biracial people might feel rejected in some way. The thing is that, you know, I don't, I think that in our community, in the black community, I've always seen black people reach out to um, biracial people and never to reject them. I've never seen somebody reject somebody because they were mixed race in the black community ever. I've seen white people reject somebody because they were part black. I have never seen a black person reject somebody because they were not all black. You see what I'm saying? We have accepted Obama. Obama's people was African and white. By right, we should have an issue with that. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people have not. They he, they say he's the first black president. We're going to give him that until somebody's a, a slave descendant up in there. Okay? So we gave him love. And that's just the way that it, that's the way it should be. But the other way around, it ain't the same way. But we as black people... We have got to stop letting small things divide us. We have not, we have come too far to allow ourselves to be divided further. We really, really do, you know. Um, I was watching a documentary one time with um, John Henry Clark, and he was talking about how in Haiti, um, during the French Revolution, there was a, a, a general named Rochambeau, and he came to Haiti, and he had this um, this huge banquet, he was trying to keep slavery there and keep order there and keep power there and control the people and, and really, you know, really control the people, get a really good uh, a handle on the people. And so with the, the ones who were there, there were a lot of mulattoes who were there who were in power and they had money and they had influence and they had, you know, some kind of the husbands were, the husbands were all generals. And so they're, they had a position of power and they were the ones who want to be in line if someone was going to succeed as, as president or as prime minister or whatever it might have been. They were in position to get that, that position. So, of course, they'd want that, okay? So what they did wrong, though, what I hope that we don't do wrong right now in the black community is we allow ourselves to be divided based off the fact that we so desperately want the white man's approval and their support that we will sell each other down the river to get that. I don't want to see that happen. Because in Haiti, when it happened like that, when they kind of assert themselves over the poor ones and it was kind of going to be status quo and they were going to be oppressed even more like they are right now, like what's happening in Haiti right now, what's always happened in Haiti, you have the rich white ex-slave owning mulattoes looking down on the poor black not land owning you know whatever black the thing is that back then what happened was rochambeau invited all these women to his house 
for a dinner. For y'all who don't know this story, it's going to be fun. Fun but sad. He invited them to his house. All the aristocratic, rich, mulatto, Haitian women came to his house. And when they got there, they all were greeted with him. He had a box for each one of them. In that box was the heads of their husbands. He had killed their husbands, cut their heads off, put it in a box, and gave it to their wife. And decided to reveal it to them at that point in time. To prove the point that we are not really thinking about y'all like that. We don't really care about y'all like that. We're going to kill y'all to control y'all just like we do anybody else. We are black, white. We, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're not one of us, you want, we, we, you, you, you're getting it. Okay? And especially for black people, we can't like allow ourselves to screw each other the first chance we get, the first little power we get. We got to stop being like that. We got to stop being more cooperative. We got to stop being more unified. We got to stop being at least more aware of the fact that we can be that way easily because... We as black people, to an extent, have been conditioned to hate ourselves. We have been conditioned to hate ourselves. That is a fact. A lot of us don't see it. It's in the media. It's in what a lot of us think. Y'all know this. A lot of y'all know this. A lot of y'all don't know this. But it's the truth. And we have to stop allowing ourselves to be divided easily. We have to focus on what's important. What can we do? How can we get people off welfare? How can we help our relatives do X, Y, and Z? How can we not be a part of the problem in our community 20 years from now? How can we be a part of the solution in our community 20 years from now? All of the above, all these things, you know, let's not allow ourselves to be further messed up because we came from a place where, you know, our story is supposed to get better. You know, at some point, it's supposed to get better, right? It gets better, as they say, right? <laughs> It don't get better for us, and that's the whole thing with the whole gay and the gay is the new black. Is gay the new black? I mean, since when was gay people slavery enslaved? I mean, I I, I miss the whole fabulous gay gay slave. And I love I love my gays. I, I, I don't get gay people. I'm about to go to this drag queen thing next week, so I don't get gay people. But keep it real, gay people were never slaves in America. Now. They had some fabulous. They, they were slaves. They had some fabulous ass slave quarters. The slave quarters was decked out. The slave quarters was like had rhinestones all over the front door. Kizzy had her hair with a little flower in it and shit. You know. <laughs> anyway, all right, peace.